you feel safe in this space. The lights are low, like, like you, everyone is welcome, and you have that endorphin rush of the cardio. So that, I think, is what makes it addictive. Hey guys, Molly Argue here for Young Hollywood. I'm so excited about today. We're at the Culver City Soul Cycle Studio, and I'm interviewing celebrity trainer Kim Nonstop. What up, everybody? I'm Kim Nonstop. Are you ready for this? <laughs> Put away the wine, lock his number on your phone, turn on an angry breakup song, and do this workout. I have to admit, I'm a bit of a Soul Cycle addict myself. I absolutely am obsessed. I'm part of the Soul Cycle tribe. But for those we maybe, you. thank you. For those that maybe don't know as much about Soul Cycle, can you tell us what makes Soul Cycle different than some of the other workout crazes and why is it so addictive? Okay, well first the addiction part I yeah. think is the endorphins. So we're doing a, like a serious cardio workout here. You're burning like yeah. 5 to 700 calories class, right? Yeah. Yes. And it's, I mean, it's intense, but at the same time, it's very low risk. So you're on a stationary bike. You're not going anywhere. You can't fall over. You can't really hurt yourself. <laughs> like there's so little that can Cycle go wrong. Dummies. You know what I mean? You feel safe in this space. The lights are low. Like, like you, everyone is welcome, and you have that endorphin rush of the cardio. So that I think is what makes it addictive. And then why is it different? I think I also touched on that. The darkness of the room, the the amazing sound system, the energy, the it's awesome. the monster. I mean, like, there's just a lot that is is just awesome about this workout, you yeah. know, that well, I don't see in a lot of other workouts. And SoulCycle started in 2006, mm -hmm. and now there's already 85 plus studios. You have a huge following on YouTube. I started my YouTube channel as a way to, like, sort of answer the questions of everybody after class and, you How know, do you I, look like this? Yeah. We are gonna hit beast mode on this workout. Got so many moves, I can show you. Wow! And training my clients, a lot of my clients would travel. Celebrities are always on the road, so they wanted hotel right. workouts. They wanted things they could take with them. They wanted recipes. They wanted basically everything. So I yeah. just started recording and making videos for them so and that they could, yeah. And it's been great. It just blew up. And um, now I make twi two videos a week, and there's some vlogs, some like day in the life. Basically, anything you want to know about what I do in the fitness world is on the internet. <laughs> scared of a lot of things, but that doesn't keep me from doing them. And that's why I want to talk to you guys about action. My journey is part of what I share with my students yeah. and my clients is that I was not always this way. I was not always um, fit. Mm -hmm. I was um, very clumsy and like an art nerd and I played the oboe. Like the oboe, <laughs> guys. Like you're not cool. There was nothing cool going on there. Um, I mean, it's a beautiful instrument. I'm not knocking it, but you know, I went to art school. I never played sports. All that stuff started later in life for me, and it's like really like a big fear that I had to overcome. So, um, how did you come to fitness and Soul Cycle? I was a bike messenger in New York City, and that'll burn calories. Yeah, I was riding my bike every day, and uh, I took a like I kind of stumbled into uh, a spin class because there's like. You know, I was, my mom was like, hey, take a class with me. And I was like, I think I could teach this, you know? Yeah. And yeah. so uh, later on, you know, Julie and Elizabeth, the founders of Soul Cycle, um, saw some promise in me and they brought me in and sort of just like brought me up from being a little, you know, young, young thing in New York riding my bike around the streets to actually, you know, teaching fitness classes. I'm swinging hard. People that are diehard fans of you saw you on the 25th. Season of Amazing oh, Race. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so I have to ask you, how was that for you? Can you tell us about, about the experience? Oh, it was awesome. It was heartbreaking. It was all of the things. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was all around just an amazing, positive experience. I loved it. We did a full lap of the world in one so month. She's been everywhere. How do you do that? Like, in one Unheard month. Unheard of. So yeah. um, we were the last team eliminated before the final. So we, uh, we did really well. That's sort of a clap, but yeah. you didn't win the million. Um, it doesn't matter. You were so close. You I won a car, it. though. And <laughs> I gave great. it to my brother. So oh, that was that's great. nice. Yeah, that's that's great. so it was great. nice to be able to give him something. We practice courage by pushing our limits. I'm so excited to jump on this bike. Yeah, let's do it. One thing 
I want to chat about before we get on the bike is I know if new people are coming into Soul Cycle. It can be a little overwhelming. The music's crazy, everyone's super pumped, everyone knows what they're doing, they're riding to the beat. If you're new and you're walking into a class, the first thing you need to know is how to set up your bike in order to be yeah. safe and ride correctly. So do you have any little tips to, sure. to show us how to do that? Um, you know, when you come into Soul Cycle, someone is gonna walk you through this. So guys, you don't have to commit this to memory right now, but <laughs> just for yourself to keep in, in, in the back of your mind, you always want your seat height. I feel like seat height is the number one thing that you really need to focus on because if you're too low, you can really like just feel, all you're gonna feel is burning, burning, burning right here, right above your kneecap and if you're too low. And you don't want that. You don't, obviously <laughs> don't want that. Yeah. So seat height should be around your hip bone. Okay. Seat depth should be Great. the length of your elbow to your fingertip. So like this. Which is also the length of your femur, right? So that's why you do seat depth. And, cool. um, but it's just easier than going like this, right? <laughs> so you just go here. <laughs> And then your handlebar height is more personal. So really, if you have any neck problems, you're gonna be a little higher. Okay. If you have any lower back pain, you wanna be a little lower. Um, right. But really, mess around with it. Like, I would highly recommend, if you have time, get here early and like, you know, ride for a few minutes Feel and it see out. how it feels. And then adjust it, because it's gotta be comfortable for you. Great. You've got your setup. You've done this before. I have. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's hop on. <laughs> I might have done this Whoa. before. I'm not sure. It's she my, might have done this my a few first times. Time. <laughs> Snapping in your shoes is actually a difficult thing too, and taking when your shoes out for the first time. Yeah, when you're like first squish, starting out. Squishing a bug. But once you learn it, you'll never forget it. It's like riding a bug. So now, what is your favorite move? Um, my favorite move. Because Soul Cycle is a lot of synchronized mm -hmm. dancing. I guess it's a dance party. It's a dance party on a bike. <laughs> But really, one of my favorite things to do on the bike, we're doing it. I love climbing. Got it. I love climbing. And then just like closing my eyes and like Rocking singing on. along to whatever music I'm listening to.